what are what are some ways uh, that you can think of that we're actually a part of this problem, a part of the system, uh, instead of you know a part of the solution? Uh, how are, how are we like unwittingly contributing to slavery across the world? Well, that is a that is a a difficult question to answer because of the reality of the answer, uh, and that is, I mean, we you know. I, th I think that, um, I, you know, there is clearly a part of, we can be a part of, there are, there are people in the United States, there are people all over the first world that are consuming the services of slaves. And so that's a really direct one-to-one -one correlation, right? Somebody who is connecting to this webcam in the Philippines and consuming this. And so that's just the most obvious part of, um, right, the, the ways that we are perpetuating slavery around the world. But I also think that the more common for most of us is I think that, and, and I, I hate to I hate to say this in a way that's shameful, but I think that for a majority of the people listening, they're like, no, I've never done any, you know, I've never experienced done anything like that. Okay. But there's also a part of it that is our inaction and our lack of ability to realize that it's actually on our watch and that we can do something is a pretty important piece to not only ending slavery, but also preventing slavery from being ended. Mm -hmm. I, I think about the feeding of the 5,000, right? We've heard this story a million times. We've seen it on flannel graphs as a little kid. But, like, what happens is Jesus is teaching. Oh, can I get into this? We have a second, don't we? Yeah, I'm yeah we got time, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So the feeding of the 5,000, right? Jesus is um, standing there, and he is teaching and teaching and teaching, and he's in a remote location. And, of course, he's doing a very good job because he's Jesus. And he, uh, you know, it goes on and on, and people brought breakfast and people probably brought lunch but somewhere in the afternoon they start to get they get hangry like the rest of us right right and like the the <laughs> disciples come up to him and are like hey you may want to send everybody home because they're really tired and hungry and you know maybe it's just time for us to be done and jesus of course replies like jesus replies and he says well you feed them and they <laughs> kind of circle back and they come back and they're like hey like i hear what you're saying that you want us to feed them <laughs> And that's like a really noble idea. But just as a point of fact, even if we had six months wages, we wouldn't have enough. And even if we had those six months wages, it's not like there's a Costco next door. Like we're in a remote location <laughs> and it's, you know, 2000 years ago. So like there's just nothing available. And it's at this point that in the story, when we're telling it as kids, we're like, and then Jesus found a little kid's lunch and fed 5,000. But the reality of it is, is he asked two questions. And these are the questions that if we're not asking ourselves these questions, then we're missing the opportunity. Because the question that Jesus asks is like, well, what do you have? Mm -hmm. And they, they basically had nothing, right? They basically stole a kid's, <laughs> a kid's lunch, right? They've got very little. And it had to have felt silly to answer the question with like 5,000 people. And in reality, they were only counting the men. So there was probably like 10 or 15,000 people there. We're talking like a solid size venue of people like a pseudo arena and they're holding up like here's a lunch bag he's like okay so that's what you've got now the really hard part is will you give it to me because it's one thing to say like this is what i've got but it's another thing to open up your hand and of course it's at that point when they open up their hand and they release what little thing they've got that they tr they're really what's really happening is they are trusting that if they do what they've got they trust jesus to do a miracle I think that is the biggest barrier for us is that we hear something about like ending slavery in India and we're like, oh, we can't go over there. We can't do anything. But what we don't realize is that we actually within each of us personally have the ability to do something significant and it won't do everything. But if we trust Jesus, like he'll do a miracle through that. And so one of the biggest things that we don't do is is one of the biggest things that we do to contribute to slavery is not a direct consumption of slaves, but it is a apathy towards the situation in the world and an unwillingness to believe that we can do something uh, significant. And so just like pray, I, we, we refuse to believe in some ways that prayer actually matters and that contributes significantly. 
because prayer does matter. God is moved by his people. He hears our prayers, and we know that even though we're this really sophisticated organization with a ton of really smart lawyers and stuff, like we we really know that the only way anything ever gets done is because God is doing miraculous things, and we're just following in that. 